Last time, we made the cat draw a bunch of different polygons. So if you recall, we were able to draw a triangle simply using this code here. And if we wanted to turn it into a square, all we had to do was change the repeat to be a four and the 360 divided by the number of sides, which is four, and I would get a square. Now, of course, that works for any different polygon that we wanted to make. And so we were able to adjust it just like that. Today, what we want to do is improve this code even more. So rather than me having to change the seven to whatever we want, I would like to be able to just have that as a variable so that both of these were the exact same thing. Now, what is a variable? Just like in math class, a variable can hold any information. In math, it would just be a number. In computer science, it could be a number, it could be a word, it could be almost anything. So to make one of those in Scratch, we go to the Data tab, we click on Make Variable, and let's just call it something that represents what it would be in this situation. Uh, number of sides seems like a good option in this case. And you'll notice that it pops up in the side of my screen here with number of sides and uh, sets it to be zero off the bat. Now what I can do is I can drag this variable in and where I used to have seven, I can replace that with the variable number of sides and do the same thing with the turn being 360 divided by the number of sides. Now, of course, if I were to press the, skate, the space key right now, I would get nothing because my number of sides is currently set to zero. So we can set the number of sides to a specific thing. So let's say that we put it to be a three. And if I double click on that to execute it, now you can see the number of sides is three. Let's press the space key and we get a triangle. Great. And if we change that to be a four, double click it, press the space key, great. So we get a square. So things seem to be working just fine. Let's try to improve that even more, and let's make it so that we can increase or decrease the number of sides simply by clicking on the up or down arrows. So to make that happen, I'm gonna to go to the events, and I'm gonna say, when you click the up arrow, so if you press that, I wanna go back to data, and this time, rather than setting the number of sides to something specific, I'd like to change it. So let's change the number of sides by one. In other words, increase it by one. And I'll just zoom out slightly so we can add another one. I'm gonna right click on that and duplicate it. And let's do a down arrow. And this time, I wanna change the sides by negative one instead of positive one. And if I do that, what we should be able to do is now hit up or down, and you can see in the top corner here that the number of sides is changing. So there's five, four, let's go up to six, seven, great. So now we can draw any one of these polygons just simply by using the up or down arrow and pressing the space bar. So that's great. We're gonna add one more thing to this. Let's say that I was drawing a square like this and I decided that I wanted to make that square uh, be a, a little bit different. I, I want to make it look a little bit fancier. There's another thing that we're going to learn and that is how can I do repetition inside of repetition? So if I wanted to make a bunch of squares happen, I could go to control and I could say let's repeat drawing a square 10 times say. And if I press the space key He's just going to draw a square 10 times, and it's directly on top of the previous square, so it looks like we've only made one. But with a very slight little change, we can make this be begin to be quite interesting. So let's go to the Motion tab again, and we're just going to have our character turn slightly. So let's say that we decided to turn, and let's go with 36 degrees. And I'll press the Space key again. Aha! Uh -huh. Now we get a really much more interesting shape. And the reason that I chose what I did is that I knew that I was repeating 10 times. And what I was going to do is draw a square. So this bit just makes me think draw a square. This bit here makes me think, oh, well, I need to turn 
by a certain amount so that I end up in the same place. Since I was repeating 10 times, if I do 36 degrees 10 times, that'll get me to 360. So for example, if I chose to do, oh, I don't know, let's go with uh, say 60 times, then I would wanna turn by six degrees because six times 60 would get me up to 360. So let's see what that looks like. And assuming that my math was correct, we should end off in the same place that we began. And we do, excellent. Now, as soon as we're doing that, there might be one other thing that you notice, and that is we can uh, notice that there is a pattern between the number of times that I'm repeating here and the amount that I'm turning in order to end up at that same spot once again. So I could make this easy on myself and I could just say, let's use the division operator once more. And rather than me having to calculate this, all that I was doing is I was saying, well, 360 divided by, and I want that number, the 60. But just like we did with the number of sides, there's no real reason for me to have to deal with that number and type it in twice. Why don't we instead use a variable? So let's make a variable here. And this time, let's just say like shapes in image or something like that. And what we'll do is simply set that value. So we can set the value to be say, oh, five. And now shapes in image can be the larger repetition and also the amount that I'm dividing 360 by. And if we give that a run, what we should be able to do is now hit clear and space again. Excellent. So there we go. And we can change this to be any amount we want. So that was five. Let's change it to be oh, 12 and hit the space bar. And that's what we get with 12. And we should be able to do this over and over uh, and make any value that we want. Ooh, the reason that didn't work for 12 is that I forgot to double click on set image. I was trying to sort that out. So if we click on that again, there we go. That made much more sense with 12. There we are. And let's change it to something else. I'll go to eight and press the space bar again. And there we go. Excellent. So just a couple of other things that we might want to add to make it look even nicer. Uh, one is we could adjust the pen color as it's moving. So for example, we could change the pen color by some amount. So let's say we want to do it after every square was drawn. So in other words, after we turn, if we do that, and let's say the number of uh, shapes in the image was 40, just to increase it so that we can see the color change and we do it again. Now you can see that the, uh, the color of each of those squares is changing as we go through the image. And we haven't even gotten into yet changing the shape itself. So far, this has all been squares, but since we had that just tied to a variable, I could just as easily change that down to be a triangle by pressing down. Now the number of sides is three. I press the space key again, and now we see what it looks like if we did the same thing, but with a triangle. And we can adjust the shapes and image. Let's say that was 12. And we try that again. There we go. So simply by adjusting both of those variables, we can make some interesting shapes very easily.